notion of a fascist. Because look, if we're just gonna use fascist toward anyone we dislike, all right, then the word doesn't actually mean anything. Okay, what do you want me to say, Anna? You, okay, if you don't wanna be called fascist, stop saying fascist things, it's not that hard. Okay. Not that hard. Oh, here, let me have dinner with Nick Fuentes, who's a Nazi, Kanye, who's a Nazi. And let me say there's good people on the Nazi side. Oh, it could be pro Confederate guys. Might be guys who are pro slavery who are good guys. Let me do all of these things. Let me say that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our nation, a Nazi term that is only used in the past by Nazis. And then say, I'm gonna ban Muslims, I'm gonna do this and this and this to all the other ethnic groups, and then go, oh, I can't believe you called me a fascist. So Anna Kasparian and Cenk Uyghur got into a full on shouting match this week as Anna tried to make the bold claim that, you know, Donald Trump may be a lot of things, but he's not exactly a fascist to which Cenk went, no, he is. <laughs> You know, the typical, but this is really a spectacle to watch because Anna tries to cure Cheng's Trump derangement syndrome to a degree by walking him through the process. It's like, okay, you say he's going to overturn democracy and do this and he's going to become a fascist dictator. How would he do that? Why don't you be realistic about your rhetoric? I mean, this is a little unhinged and it is quite the spectacle to watch. So we'll show you that here today, folks. But first, do us a big favor. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new and why should you subscribe because doing so goes a long way in ensuring we can keep bringing you these videos we are now less than a week away from the election never been a better time to help us in our fight against the machine by supporting independent media and hitting that red button down below and with that said let's take a listen some people are speculating Anna's time at TYT may be limited. I'm not here to talk about that. What I am here to do is show you the clip because it gets crazy. Check it out. Am I losing my mind in feeling that this hyperbolic rhetoric is not helpful? Yeah, well, 50-50 in my opinion. So when uh, Debbie Dingell says uh, he's gonna start internment camps, he never said that. That is not helpful. On that, you're 100% right. Because once she says something that he didn't say, then not only the right wing, but independents will discount every other thing you've said. Not just every other thing you've said, but every other, every other thing that anyone on the left has said. He never said internment camps, don't say that. Now, on the other hand, Republicans. So wait, we're off to a strong start so far. Chenk admits, yeah, internment camps, that's a little ridiculous. Some lady basically said that on MSNBC this week. And Anna, you're not going crazy, okay? All you're recognizing is the reality. Yes, actually, this is not very effective political rhetoric for Democrats, and it's never been effective. That's the truth. All this fear-mongering, this ridiculous behavior, you guys seem like the crazy ones. But now Chenk is about to go off the rails, as you could probably imagine. You keep denying something he 100% did say. He said, I want a total and complete shutdown on Muslims entering the country. That was back when he was running in 2016. Everybody keeps, you know why they pretend that he didn't say that? Because that sounds uncomfortable, because it's obviously bigoted. Okay, he did say that. Donald Trump says a lot of dumb crap. Okay, a lot of hateful crap, a lot of dumb crap, a lot of undemocratic crap. But like, let's just finish the rest of the story, right? Because he said that about the Muslim ban. He tried to implement the Muslim ban. And then what happened, Jenk? What happened after that? We fought back. Right. And uh, uh, people went to the airports, good Americans. No, no, that didn't matter at all, okay? Th that action, I know it makes us feel real good about ourselves. I'm not trying to discount it, but we have a system in place. Okay, we have a judicial system, it went through the courts, it was challenged in the courts, and it was struck down. Yeah, I got you, Anna, but I'm not gonna take a chance on a guy who says I'd like to ban you and your family because you guys are so dirty and inferior to us, and I think you're violent savages, so I'm gonna ban you. I'm not gonna take a chance on that guy, number one. Number two, he actually tried it, he had to be stopped before he did his fascist idea. Okay, number three, people saw all that and were like, yay, I love Trump, let's ban Muslims, yay. Be honest, be honest, okay? So we wanna take another shot. And number th uh, three or four, whatever I'm on, 
Uh, he has his own dumbass judges now littering the country. So one of them threw uh, out a perfectly good criminal case against them. A very, very yeah. important criminal case against them. So maybe we run into a judge who goes, yeah, I think the Muslims are dirty, violent savages. I'm just as bigoted and racist as Donald Trump. I, I do let it stand. Now, if you care so much about things Trump said back in 2016 that he, you know, never ended up implementing or whatever, you know, campaign things he said a long time ago, is it then fair to use Kamala's comments on 2020, right? From fracking in terms of health care, so everything else reparations you know she has endorsed a lot of crazy nonsense as well just a question there i don't know i mean trump is saying let's deport anyone who criticizes and protests israel on a college campus not just arrest he says arrest them and deport them no i know he says that okay so, so is he going to try to do that of course he's going to try to how do that. would that process work considering the majority of these individuals are american citizens so where exactly where he's okay so first them? of all the non-americans are screwed you came here, you paid a lot of money to go to, uh, you know, wh wherever you're going, Syracuse, Penn State, wherever you're going, right? And he's like, ah, oh, yeah, that's it, you're screwed. You criticized Israel and want my biggest donor is a giant right-wing Israeli. Okay, so that's it, you're arrested, I rob you of all your money, I rob you of your diploma, and I deport you. I'm not going to elect them. Don't engage in violence then, because that's what's actually being discussed here is like not kids who go wave a Palestine flag on campus, okay? We're talking about, for instance, the protesters who literally took over buildings in Colombia, right? That's what we're talking about. And yeah, actually, I do find it to be pretty reasonable that if you're a guest in this country, whether that's on a student visa, a tourist visa, a work visa, you shouldn't come into another country and commit violence. Like, that probably seems like grounds for deportation. That's regardless of your left wing, your right wing, your pro Trump, your pro Kamala, your pro Israel, your pro Palestine. That should be a pretty universal rule of law. And to me, that actually seems pretty fair. But uh, I promise you, keep watching because it's about to get very entertaining. Look at Cheng's face. Look at Cheng's face. A monster like that? Debbie Dingle, you don't have to go to internment camps. He already said all this crazy stuff. So stop making us lose credibility. On the other hand, right-wingers, if you're making excuses for how anti-Muslim he is, he uses the word Palestinian as an insult. He doesn't care about Muslim lives <laughs> one bit. Donald Trump is deeply racist and he says deeply racist things, okay? I wanna make a distinction between Donald Trump, the person who says and does racist things, and the notion of a fascist. Because look, if we're just gonna use fascist toward anyone we dislike, all right, then the word doesn't actually mean anything. Okay, what do you want me to say, Anna? You want me to say wannabe dictator? Uh, sure, you can say uh, wannabe dictator, but I don't even <laughs> think he wants to be a dictator. Of course he does. That's what you do when you lose an election and you go, oh, I got fake electors and, I, and I'd like to terminate the Constitution and bring out the tanks and use martial law against American citizens and shoot protesters. I mean, if that's not fascist, <laughs> then I guess the word just shouldn't exist. But Anna's like, oh boy, here he goes again. <laughs> was he able to do those things? <laughs> First of all, his entire cabinet had to threaten, not, not cabinet, administration, his White House team the other had thing to is say, we're all going to mass resign if you roll out tanks against American citizens. Okay, okay, so if you think he's a fascist, wouldn't that justify taking physical action against him? No, because that- Boom. <laughs> that doesn't help, that devolves us further into yeah, fascism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But there's I a just... difference between somebody shooting someone, that's fascism, and saying, I disagree with them, don't elect a fascist prick who says only white people are awesome and everybody else is garbage and should be banned. No, Look, I'm not going to take a chance with a monster like that. I know. You're wait, 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 wait. Let's play that again. What, what did Cenk imply that Trump said? That's fascism. And saying, I disagree with them, don't elect a fascist prick who says only white people are awesome and everybody else is garbage and should be banned. Okay. You heard that there. So notice in the beginning, the one concession that Cenk made to our side is you shouldn't bring up things that Trump never said, right? The internment camps thing is completely made up. Those words never came out of his mouth. And so the point Cenk was making is, yes, it is a misleading, it is an ineffective political attack line because it just makes you lose all credibility. Okay, Cenk, I totally agree with you. Now, with that said, show me where Trump said 
that only the white people are good and amazing and everyone else is garbage and bad. Hey, that never happened. What do you, what is this quote coming from? You know, just going to point that out. So apparently it's okay when Chenk makes up things that Trump never said, but it's bad when MSNBC did it because they're corporate media and we're, you know, fighting the establishment. Fair enough. Okay. I, I'm fully okay with challenging the cable news networks. We business model wise are doing a very similar thing to TYT by being on the internet. So I have no issue, but I'm just saying, if you're going to criticize MSNBC for saying things like that, you don't in the same segment completely straw man and make up something that Trump said. He just pulled that out of nowhere. You know? <laughs> that has never been said by Trump. Just saying. All right, let's see if Anna will address this. No, Look, I'm not going to take a chance with a monster like that. I know you're focusing on whether or not you're going to vote for him. I don't give a damn about that. And that's not what I'm asking you about, Jenk. I don't think that this rhetoric, especially from elected members of Congress, is helpful. No, at a time I don't agree. Okay, all right. Okay, well, Anna, well, Anna, why do I not agree? Because, so Trump's helpful is rhetoric? Trump's helpful. No, his, re his rhetoric is so, awful. Okay, if you don't want to be called fascist, stop saying fascist things. It's not that hard. Okay. Not that hard. Oh, here, let me have dinner with Nick Fuentes, who's a Nazi, Kanye, who's a Nazi. And let me say there's good people on the Nazi side. Oh, it could be pro-Confederate guys. Might be guys who are pro-slavery who are good guys. Let me do all of these things. Let me say that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our nation, a Nazi term that is only used in the past by Nazis, and then say, I'm going to ban Muslims, I'm going to do this and this and this to all the other ethnic groups, and then go, oh, I can't believe you called me a fascist. No, he is a fascist. I'm very happy to call him a fascist. Okay, uh, kind of lost Chenk at the end. I mean, that, that got kind of ridiculous. Oh, he's a fascist! But no, I mean, the central premise of this entire segment was that the hyperbolic or ridiculous performative rhetoric around Trump is not helpful. I mean, literally the title of this video says, are the Democrat dramatics about Trump even helpful? And it seemed like in the beginning, Chenk and Anna were on common ground, which is when you say very ridiculous things about Trump, you lose credibility there. But then Chenk proceeds to engage in the very exact behavior that they were criticizing there in the beginning. Anna is like, well, you know, I don't know if it's helpful. And by the way, I wanna point this out too, in fairness, her central point was really that the type of rhetoric that they're using is not constructive. Like ultimately, if you really want to summarize her point, she's just basically saying that Democrats are not going to win on this type of rhetoric, which is true. But uh, Cheng just completely loses his mind because someone on his network is suggesting maybe calling Trump a fascist a million times throughout the years has not worked. It will continue not to work. And uh, I don't know how dare Anna have a reasonable take about politics and wanting to make arguments that are convincing to people and don't sound ridiculous. But I guess Cenk screaming about he's a fascist, he's anti-Muslim. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, just put Cenk on TV then. Maybe send Cenk out there to make a campaign speech, I guess, and uh, see how he resonates. After all, he did run for president once and got like no votes, even though he went out suggesting that he had a chance of winning the Vermont primary. But I don't know, Cenk. I don't know. I think you may need a brief masterclass, perhaps from Anna, on the type of rhetoric that is actually effective, okay? But yeah, with that said, guys, let me know your thoughts on this segment in the comment section down below. What do you think of the shouting match that Chenk and Anna got into? And is is there drama brewing eventually with her in the network? I don't know. Be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe if you are new, and until next time, God bless and peace.